How are you doing, YouTube? This is Will from Will Development. It's my 439th weekly update. <clears throat> uh, going to be kind of quick this week. Um, back to a scheduled training regimen. Regiment? Regimen? I don't know what the proper word is. It doesn't really matter, but back on a schedule, actually writing things out and down and, uh, you know, trying to actually pursue them well. And uh, things are actually going pretty good. Um, ironically, we had kind of an equipment malfunction at the gym, most notably, uh, was a recent sort of, I, I wouldn't even call it a PR, but it's just a consistency thing for me. Um, we have two sandbags at the gym, and I've been really, really, really pushing to get better at sandbags um, because it's, I mean, other than my overhead, it is probably the worst Achilles heel I have when it comes to being competitive, and it looks like that particular event, which is stupid and I hate it, isn't going anywhere. So I figured I might as well get good enough at it to actually, you know, potentially not zero and or come in last at it for once. Uh, it'd be nice. That's all I'm going to say about it. But I've been really working hard at it, you know, and uh, earlier in the week was, uh, was working with the 35 over, I think, 13 feet for like triples, which was awesome. I mean, that's definitely a consistency PR for me. Now I've thrown that weight over 15 before, but you know, heat of the competition, you name it, you know, all those things. Uh, I, I tend to usually perform a little bit better in competition than I do in training. Um, plus you never really know what the actual weight of implements are in strongman. That's what makes it strongman. As long as everybody's doing the same thing, it doesn't really matter. Um, well, in the course of doing that, you know, the 35 we have is actually a really cheap bag. It's uh, from this company, Muscle Pirate. They don't even do that work anymore, and it's probably because the bags were just garbage, honestly. But they were super cheap. And, I mean, to say they're garbage, that one's lasted us a long time. But the way you put them together is you basically, like, roll down the bag, and then you zip tie it all together to keep it closed. Well, the zip ties popped off. And to make a long story short, I've had to work with just the 40 now because that's all we have right now because for some reason, finding zip ties is just such a production and I just keep forgetting. I have bags and bags of them because I need them for the molds. Um, and I just keep forgetting to grab them and nobody's reminding me. So I just had to work with the 40. And honestly, I've been just throwing the 40 over 11 like super consistently, like doubles at 11, which I've never been able to do in training. So it's getting better. It's getting good. Finally, it's, uh, I feel like I've got some semblance of a technique that's very consistent and works. So that's very exciting. Um, overhead wise has been a lot easier than I meant it to be this week. And by easier, I just mean, I didn't get as much work done as I wanted to, uh, on it. Um, drilling log, incline benching and axle right now, just to try to get a lot better at overhead or at least more consistent with it. And I mean, honestly, it's not been bad per se. I was able to hit basically as many singles as I wanted uh, on axle today at like 85% or 90%, I think something along those lines. And like, it didn't feel bad on any of the reps. Now on a couple of them, I was like, maybe I should go for a double. And I was like, ah, eh, let's just not today. And then I got distracted. That was today I got distracted. I ended up getting dragged into doing more bag throws today, um, which worked out again. Honestly, I was still consistent. I was hitting over 11 feet easily. And I was like, cool, 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 cool. I'm going to have to just work on that slowly and surely and just keep keep working the yeats. Um, I will not be satisfied until I'm throwing that 40 over 15 feet consistently uh, for like doubles. That's, that's, that's my short-term goal. I mean, long-term, I'd love to be able to yeet a 50 over 15 feet, I think that would put me in like world-class status for like a lightweight guy. Um, is that going to happen anytime soon? Eh, maybe not, but you know, I always try to set goals that I know I can't get. Um, deadlift day went well. Um, I think I've talked about it, but basically I'm only doing actual deadlifts like once a month basically right now and just sort of doing a lot of movements around deadlifts. So things like, uh, you know, heavy rows and RDLs and a lot of hamstring specific work and that kind of thing. And then, uh, yeah, squats on Monday were great. Did a, did a disgusting 10 by 10, um, with limited rest on front squats. Um, felt good too. I felt not necessarily strong, but I just, I felt good doing it. Um, weight's not quite 
there yet, but it's one of those things where, Hey, let's just keep working. Let's just keep working. And, uh, yeah. So everything, everything went pretty good. I'm trying to think what other day was there. My first press day logs, just doing log clean press complex, which is just gross, but it, it, I mean, it helps. So, you know, get better at the clean, get better at everything. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, right now. Um, if anybody's curious about the personal side of my life with the uh, motorcycle, everything has been going very well. I've been uh, daily riding to the gym for the last week. Um, you know, when I first got it, I had to ride it home from the shop. And uh, it's my first bike. And um, very exciting. Nerve wracking. And, uh, uh, you know, wouldn't you know it, you know, I, I planned my trip from the shop. It wasn't like it was that far away from the house, but it was about two miles from where the gym is on this. It's off of the same main road, but then sort of down, a you know, a side road, uh, but like another mile or two up from the gym. And uh, actually, it's probably like three miles from the gym. But, you know, wouldn't you know it, hyping myself up to leave the shop. I'm on the curb. I'm waiting. And I, I loved where the location was because there was a light right down the street, basically a block and a half away. And so I was like, cool, I'll just wait for that light on the left to turn red, and then I'll turn right, and I'll just hang out in the left lane where I need to be so I can turn left, get on the main road, and that is the – that was going to be the hardest turn right there, just getting out of the shop. And, you know, I stalled out, of course, right right there. Um, stalled out three times on that trip, actually. And then uh, since then, I've only stalled the bike like twice since – and I'm trying to think too, um, did run out of gas one time, but on purpose because my particular bike is, uh, it's a cruiser style and it's older, um, 2008. So it, um, it has no fuel gauge or fuel light. And the way those work is when, when you run out of fuel in the main tank, they call it, you just reach down and you flip a switch down to the reserve, which should get you about another 30 miles or so, uh, yeah, because I think my bike gets like 40 miles a gallon, something along those lines. Um, so it should get you about another 30 miles. But yeah, stalled out right at a light. And I was like, oh, okay, well, there's my new zero. So I'll just go refill the tank and then wait till this happens again. And then I'll actually have an idea of how much I can get from each fill up um, until I hit the reserve. And uh, so that was nerve wracking. And then uh, what was the other time I stalled out? Oh, yeah, the other time I stalled out was when I it's an older bike and it's carbureted. So it's a good habit to when you're, when you park a bike that's carbureted that you turn the fuel valve to the off position. That way it doesn't leak fuel, potentially leak fuel into the carburetors, flooding them, you know, gumming them up faster. There's a lot of problems that can arise from that. So it's just a good habit to, even if you're just parking for 10 minutes to just flip that switch to off and then just switch it to run when it's time to go. And, uh, I had forgotten to turn the switch to, to run Started the bike, let it warm up. I always do. And then, uh, you know, it only takes about three minutes to warm up. And then uh, <laughs> took off, took the turn down uh, to head out of the neighborhood. And then just bike just dies. I'm sitting there like, try to start it again. And then, oh, yeah, you forgot to turn the valve on to go. So, so yeah, personal life wise, that stuff's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun learning how to be a more confident rider. Not pro pro tip. If you're getting into motorcycles, uh, do a lot of research, read, watch a lot of YouTube videos on, uh, on how to ride. And most of them will say the same thing, which is practice your low speed stuff. That's actually the hard stuff. Um, you know, riding on a mildly twisty road at 60 miles an hour is really not that hard. It's, you're basically just riding a really, really, really fast bicycle. Um, the hard stuff is like in a parking lot when you're going 10 miles an hour, and you're trying to keep both feet on the pegs. That's the hard stuff. That's really what you need to practice is just go into a parking lot and practice doing U-turns and stuff and figure eights. Cause that's, that's the hard stuff, especially on my bike. And so, like I said, it's a cruiser and it's, it's like 650 pounds. So if you slow down too much, you definitely feel the weight of it. And it feel, you, you feel a thing want to fall and it's scary to just like, no, nope, just stick with it, man. But I also don't recommend starting on a heavy bike like I did. Um, you know, do as I say, not as I do, right? But anyway, training went well. I am excited for a show tomorrow where I am a sponsor at the USA Fit Games. If you're in the Orlando, Florida area, come check it out. It's going to be a very intimate competition. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. 
And uh, I, I tend to like shows when they're like that, when they're not so, you know, like Magnanimous, it's not too big because there's just, it, they go on forever and you can't keep track of anybody. But shows like this where it's a little more intimate, there's not as many competitors. Um, it's a lot more fun to watch, in my opinion. It's a lot more fun to compete in it, too. It's indoors. It's at an expo. So there's lots of free samples to run around and grab. Um, hell, today when I went to go set up some stuff, uh, I was given an entire case of some energy drink from the booth that's like right behind uh, the the strongman section. So, you know, come on out, have a good time. And uh, if you don't, then what's your excuse?